Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to New Creation. Thank you for joining us today on our YouTube channel or Facebook or however you, you found us. Um, hoping that uh, one day the lockdown will end and you'll be able to join us in person. Uh, we're coming to you from our uh, church facility in Werner, Ontario. For those of you joining us for the first time, my name is Chris Suka and I'm the one blessed uh, to have oversight of, of this, uh, this gathering. So we welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, um, you know, I, I've had the blessing of going to Africa a few times. And, and in Africa, they always say you cannot pray too much. So uh, the message is about prayer. It's going to stay about prayer for who knows. I, I don't honestly know. I'm, I'm just going as the Lord leads. And the Lord said, this is a season for prayer. So everything is focused on prayer. So we're going to pray. And then we're going to learn about prayer. And then we're going to pray some more. So wherever you are joining us, we welcome you and we invite you to pray. Um, if you're listening on um, some kind of mobile device while driving, I always uh, strongly encourage you to pray with your eyes open. Please don't close your eyes. Um, but we will we'll pray uh, together. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you that Lord, wherever we are, you meet us. In our living rooms, in our bedrooms, in our offices, in our cars, in our workplaces. Lord, wherever we are, that's where you meet us. And Lord, I thank you that we can invite your Holy Spirit to have dominion wherever we are. No matter what we're doing, we can invite you to have dominion within us and to lead us into your truth. To lead us in our relationship with you. So Holy Spirit, we just pray that you would bless everyone who is listening. That you would give us an ear to hear the word that you are saying. Give us a mind to understand it and a heart to receive it that we would be changed by your presence, that your word would not return to you void, but would accomplish that for which you have sent it. Lord, we're trusting you. We praise you and we bless you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. As I mentioned, we're continuing with prayer. Prayer is so crucial. When Solomon dedicated the temple, um, in 2 Chronicles chapter 6, he said, Lord, let your, let your whole being, let your face always be attentive to the prayer made toward this place. That, Lord, when your people from any place that they go, if they pray towards this place, hear them and answer their prayer. That's 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 6. That's um, the short, short version. Um, and then in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, the Lord appeared to Solomon and answered his prayer, saying in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, If my people, who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then shall I hear from heaven and shall forgive their sin and shall heal their land. God answered Solomon's prayer. Now, I want to point out this morning the very first part of that passage. If my people who are called by my name. There is something glorious, powerful, and simply amazing about being called God's people, called by His name. This is not a call for repentance of the government. It's not a call of repentance to, to the entire nation. It's a calling to a specific group within the nation, within the government, within whatever place. It's not a call of the whole nation. We're in Canada, so it's not a call for all of Canada to, to repent, all 38 million or, or whatever our recent population is. Uh, but it's it's a calling of God's people to pray. It's a calling for God's people called by His name. It's a calling for us to pray on behalf of the rest of our nation. For us to stand for our whole nation. That we don't need, I mean it would be wonderful, but we don't need all 38 million coming before the Lord. We just need some who are called by the Lord's name and that that will make a difference that God has said if my people 
not the whole nation, but of my people who are called by my name, if they shall humble themselves, which is fasting, and pray, seek my face, then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, will heal their land. So we are the people who are called, the people called by his name. A wonderful example of this is found in Abraham. Abraham is called the father of faith. Scripture says he believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. And so in Genesis 18, verse 17, it says, And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Verse 18. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord, to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. That the Lord said this concerning Sodom and Gomorrah, that the Lord had seen the wickedness. Uh, verse uh, 20 says, And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous. That the Lord said, I will show Abraham the thing that I'm going to do. That God called Abraham his friend. And he revealed to Abraham his plan. You know, and we in the New Testament have this wonderful blessing of being called friends of God. Jesus said in John 15, I don't call you servants, for a servant does not know the master's business. But I call you friends. For everything that I've received of the Father, I have revealed to you that you might know my business. That God invites us, saying, I, I'm calling you my friend. So I'm not going to hide from you that which I'm going to do, but I'm going to reveal it to you as you walk with me, for I know you. This is an amazing thought. Um, that's not where this message is going, but that's an amazing thought in and of itself. But that God calls us friends. And because he calls us friends, he wants us to walk with him as friends. That we would walk with him in whatever he's going to do. And in this case, it is answering the cry raised up because of Sodom and Gomorrah, because of their sin. That he was asking Abraham to walk with him and what was going to happen. Now verses 22 through 32 is the account of Abraham interceding for Sodom and Gomorrah. So this is Genesis uh, 18 uh, verses 22 through 32 you can you can follow along in your Bible or, or flip or, or however in your phones or however you're, you want to do that but it's Genesis 18 uh, 22 through 32 and the men okay, I'm, I'm going to backtrack a little bit the context is that the Lord visited Abraham the pre-incarnate Christ visited Abraham with two men who uh, by the time you get to 8, 19, you figure out that they're angels. Uh, and so that there's the Lord and two angels, and they're visiting Abraham physically. I mean, that's pretty mind-blowing. Just if you stop there for even half a second, that, that's a pretty amazing um, thought. That, that God visited Abraham physically to tell him what was going to happen, because Abraham was called the friend of God, and Abraham believed God, and God believed Abraham, that Abraham would instruct the generations to come in the way of the Lord, that Abraham would essentially teach his children and his grandchildren and his great-grandchildren to walk with God. So, um, so verse 22 says, And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. These are the angels. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Perhaps, peradventure, if you're reading the old King James, there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner. 
to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. That's not according to your character, Lord. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Absolutely. And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. And Abraham answered and said, Behold now, I have taken unto me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. I am but dust and ashes, and yet I speak unto the Lord. Peradventure, or perhaps, there shall lack five of the fifty uh, righteous. Wilt thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, the Lord said, If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. And he spake unto him yet again and said, Perhaps there be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. And he said unto him, this is now verse 30, O oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Peradventure there be thirty found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. Verse 31, and he said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure there shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. Verse 32, and he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but this once. Perhaps ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. Verse 33, And the Lord went his way as soon as he left communing with Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. Now, I want to point out, God invited Abraham to stand before the Lord, praying on behalf of Sodom and Gomorrah, praying on behalf of these whole kingdoms that had fallen into sin. I mean, Ezekiel goes into the, their sins, saying they, 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 they were uncaring, they were cold, I mean, they, there were sexual sins, there was every kind of sin. Um, you know, we often remember uh, the, the certain sins, but there were so many sins in these cities. Uh, and yet, God invited Abraham to stand in the gap on behalf of Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, in Ezekiel 22, verse 30, let's turn there. Um, I have been doing this the old-fashioned way, so I have to turn there, but if you flip on your phone or however way you're following along with us. Um, Ezekiel 22, verse 30, the Lord says, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it. But I found none. And the Lord said, I, I sought for a man. I looked for someone. What, what is God looking for? Sometimes we can focus on, on God's wrath and anger, but God's actually looking for someone to say, I want to be your friend. I, I want to come alongside you. Lord, I, I want to pray for my community. I want to pray for my land. Lord, I want to invite your will to be done. That God is looking for someone to walk in friendship and partnership with him. That, that Someone to say, Lord, Lord, I want to be your friend. I want to walk with you. I want to submit my will to your will. That, Lord, I, I want to say, Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And God says, if I find someone, the whole land would be spared. The whole land will, will be cleansed, will be healed, sins will be forgiven. That there would be a blessing poured out instead of a curse because someone stood in the gap. He said, I look for a man among them that should make up the hedge, that, that, that should make up a wall of protection, a, a prayer wall around the community, uh, people standing on guard. Uh, in, in the Old Testament, uh, well, we're still in the Old Testament, but in, you will read about uh, Elisha, I didn't write down the reference, um, where he was in, in the midst of the city and they saw the army of the Arameans and the Syrians surrounding it and, and his servants said, Lord, what are we going to do? And, and Elisha prayed and said, Lord, just open his eyes and he might see there's more 
that, that are on our side that are on the enemy's side. And his eyes were open and he saw the army of the angels encamped all around the city. That in fact the army of the Syrians, they were the ones surrounded by the Lord's army. Um, that God is looking for men, humanity, men and women, young and old, anybody to stand in the gap. To pray on behalf of the land. To, to stand in the gap before me for the land. That I should not destroy it, but I found none. That he searches for a man. That God said to Abraham, shall I not tell him this thing that I'm going to do? I need to commune with my friend Abraham. I need to tell him what I'm going to do. This is important because we're friends. It would not be right to hide from him. And I know his nephew lives in the city, so that's important to him. So I, I'm going to tell him. All that I'm going to do. And this, so for some of you, this might even sound offensive. What, that God would dare to tell man? What God does. The Apostle Paul, in writing a long time after Abraham, said, you know, who knows the things of God but the Spirit of God? Who knows the deep things? And yet, the Spirit searches them out and brings them out, that God reveals them by His Spirit. That, you know, in, in John 15, we have Jesus, God the Son, say, I don't call you servants, but I call you friends, for everything that the Father is doing I reveal to you. And it's His Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who reveals that, that we are called the friends of God, and who reveals those things. God is looking for someone to walk with Him, to walk with Him, someone to stand in the gap before me, someone to pray for the land. Someone to give themselves before me, because this is not an easy calling. It'd be much easier not to stand in the gap. It'd be so much easier to just close our eyes. Excuse me. And not stand in the gap. But to not stand in the gap is to have indignation poured out upon the land. It's to have what the land deserves poured out, which is not what God wants. God's desire is to forgive. When the Lord revealed himself to Moses, he said, I am the Lord, abundant in, in mercy, and slow to anger, abounding in love, that God's desire is to forgive. God's desire is, is to see someone stand and intercede on behalf. Um, if, if you've been following us um, and you've been listening to uh, the previous messages, you will know that I've been speaking a lot from Daniel 10 where it says, uh, in Daniel 10, verses 1 to 3, Daniel, for, for three weeks, 21 days, prayed and fasted before the Lord. That he, he sought the Lord in, in prayer. Daniel stood, and Daniel was in Babylon. He, he was in, in the Persian Empire, and yet, Babylonia, and yet he prayed before the Lord, interceding on behalf of the Pete, the children of Israel, but also all of the land. And, and in fact, the Lord had given him a revelation of all of time. What was to take place? That the Messiah would come. But Daniel stood before the Lord praying on behalf of the whole land. On behalf of all of its inhabitants. Daniel prayed. He stood in the gap. He, he, if there was a gap, he filled it. He rushed to fill it. That, that there would be a hedge of protection and a hedge of blessing upon the people. Because that was, is God's desire. That Daniel did this. He prayed and he fasted and he sought the Lord on behalf of the people. Now we, if you have believed on Jesus Christ, we are exceedingly blessed to be called by his name. For we have known the name of the Lord, for his name is Jesus, which means I am salvation. That we are called the people of Jesus, the people of the Christ. That if you have believed on Jesus, and if you haven't yet believed on Jesus, there is no time like the present. I invite you to come and know the Lord today, to receive Him, to believe on Him, that He died for your sins and He rose for your justification, that He has made you right with God. He's reconciled you to God. God has always wanted to be reconciled. God always has loved you. He's always called you, but you needed to be reconciled to God. And that's been accomplished through Jesus and by His blood. And because it's been accomplished through Jesus and by His blood, and if you have believed on Him and if you have received Him, that 
We are called a royal priesthood and a holy nation. We are called a royal priesthood and a holy nation. That we have been given both an authority and a responsibility to stand in the gap. That we are the answer to God's desire. This is a strange thought, and, and again, some of you might even be offended by this. But you know that God actually looks for something. We pray, we have a desire, and we bring it before the Lord. Do you ever, have we ever thought that God actually has a desire? And you might be the answer to His desire? I looked for a man, I sought someone who would walk with me in friendship. Who would walk with me before, on behalf of the land. That Abraham walked with God. And so everyone who believes is called a child of Abraham through faith. That God looks for someone, just as he looked for Abraham, to stand with him. That we have been called into nothing less than friendship with God. And we've been called into a mighty purpose to stand with him in agreement here in the earth. And essentially we're saying, Lord, we are here in the earth and we're praying. The Lord, let your will be done. Let your kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, that glorious as it is in heaven, let it be so here in the earth. That Lord, let the blessing of heaven flow into the earth. Lord, let there be a clear way. Let there be a clear pathway. Let there be an open heaven before us, Lord, that your kingdom, your glory, and your mercy might be manifest here in the earth. That that is God's cry. That is the cry of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That God is looking for someone. 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 God saying, who will stand? Who will seek my face? Who will stand of my people who are called by my name? For if my people... Who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Why? Because you're called a friend of God. That this is what God has desired. You are the answer to God's desire. You are the answer. But you must pray. We must all pray. In, in this season, I mean, th th there's so much going on in the world. There's, there's political unrest. Th there's a, a disease that, that's causing so many problems. There's all kinds of hidden agendas. I'm not going to go into that. Uh, there's, there's a time when churches cannot gather, but when people cannot meet, when everyone is suffering from isolation from the, for different reasons. Uh, when there's so much fear, when there's so much control, when there's so much manipulation, if there was ever a time when these words spoken 3,000 years ago were applicable, it is today that God looks for someone to stand in the gap, someone to pray, someone to answer God's prayer. You know, in the very end of time, the Apostle John received the revelation. I'm going to end with this. He received the revelation of the coming of Christ, of the end of all things, but the one who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who was and is and is yet to come. And at the very end of all things, it says the Spirit and the Bride say come. At the Spirit, the very Spirit of God says come, and the Bride here in the earth says come. That that becomes a duet. A beautiful song sung together saying, Lord, let your will be done. Lord, let your kingdom come. Come, Lord. That we are called to stand in that gap. We are the answer to God's desire. Are you going to answer his call today? Are you going to humble yourself and pray and seek his face on behalf of the land? On behalf of Ontario, or whatever province, or territory, or state, or wherever you are. On behalf of your country, whether it's Canada, or the USA, or whatever country you're in. 
God desires that His kingdom is to come and His will is to be done in the earth, even as it is in heaven, because He has called you His friend. He wants you to seek Him. So I pray you will do that. I pray you will lean into Him. Let the Holy Spirit lead you as you pray and as you seek His face on behalf of your family, your communities, your churches, our land. I'll ask you to pray with me wherever you are. Father, then thank you, Lord, that you have invited us to pray. That, Lord, you have desired us. Lord, th this is mind-blowing. That you should seek us. That you would look for someone to answer your cry and your desire. You would look for us, Lord. And that, Father, when your people were called by your name, when we humble ourselves and we pray and we seek your face, hmm, Lord, you said your mercy and your grace would be poured out, that you would forgive our sin, you would heal our land. Father, I pray that this reality would be impressed upon everyone listening, that we would answer your cry, that we would come and we would say, Father, forgive on behalf of our land, on behalf of our nations, that, Lord, we would stand in the places where we need to stand, that, Lord, we would kneel, we would go on our knees before you in the places where we need to go on our knees, Lord, that we would cry out to you, that we would seek you, that, Lord, we would come before you even as Abraham did on behalf of our own nations, Lord, on behalf of our own towns, our own communities, Lord, that we would pray and we would seek your face, we would confess we would repent. For Lord, this is what you have called us to do, to stand in the gap. Lord, help us to do this. For Lord, it's not by power nor by might, but by your spirit. We cannot do it on our own. Lord, help us to answer your call and your cry. Father, I thank you. This is an amazing privilege. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Pray that the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. Amen. And we'll look forward to seeing you again.